That distinction between performance and learning uh, that Bob mentioned, I think is really important. I mean, we like to think we know how to learn, how we learn best, in what situations we learn best, and that we know when we've learnt something. But as we saw in episode three, uh, we have no real insight into, into, the, the, into the basis of our behaviour, and we, it's really difficult to predict uh, what we'll learn and whether we'll be able to retrieve this stuff in the future. I mean, that's, that's exactly right. But who better to provide uh, an indication of how much we learned than ourselves, right? And, and again, we, as you said, we saw this in episode three. We're not the best people to determine whether we understand something or not. And it's, we're, we keep coming back to this idea of fluency or ease of processing. System one is responding, and system two is picking up on how easy it was for system one to do that. And that's exactly what's happening here with learning. If, if something is easy, if something goes down easily, we misinterpret that ease, that simplicity with knowledge, with comprehension, with understanding. And that's, that's a real problem. And it's, it's paradoxical in a sense because people use that information to gauge how much they know about a particular concept. And I have a, a really good example of this. Uh, it was back quite a few years ago. Uh, I was teaching uh, an advanced statistics course uh, for honors students. And it was compulsory. All the students were required to take this course, a fourth year honors level course called Advanced Multivariate Statistics. And the students were understandably very uh, worried, very anxious about taking this kind of difficult topic, and it was difficult. Uh, and I worked hard, I really worked hard to try to do everything I could to make it easier for the students to understand this material. But at the time I didn't really, I hadn't really read much in this area, uh, and so I didn't understand the importance of retrieval and the importance of uh, desirable difficulties. Um, so at the time I gave, I prepared this lecture, it was a very difficult lecture on eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And uh, I did everything I could to make it easier on the students. For example, um, I represented it in a whole bunch of different ways. So you, have, you can represent this in matrix notation and algebraically, geometrically. Uh, I, did, I had diagrams. I, had, I was essentially pre-processing, digesting all of this stuff for the students. So all they had to do was just sit back and kind of watch it unfold. Now they did that. And I had one student who came up to me after the lecture and she said, Jason, you know, I, I completely understand. I get it. It feels so much better. Now that you've presented it to me, I understand everything about eigenvectors and eigenvalues. And I thought to myself, well, there's no way. There's no way that you could have. I struggled. <laughs> it took you weeks to, to put this stuff <laughs> to together. Exactly. Yeah. And, and preparing it, you have to sit down and work at it. Do a few problems and, and try to explain it to yourself. And she didn't do that. And sure enough, when the exam came around, she didn't do that well. She clearly didn't understand it as well, nearly as well as she thought that she did. Yeah, the same thing happens to me when I'm uh, watching a documentary on a topic that I don't know much about. So when I'm watching a beautiful BBC documentary by Brian Cox uh, on the wonders of the universe, right? So he's talking about a complex topic like entropy and he goes on and he's using these beautiful examples with, you know, sand and talking about time and how it relates to basic physics and how we perceive time. It just, it, it looks looks fantastic and I'm like wow I've never understood this so well I guarantee if if somebody paused that TV show and asked me one thing about entropy I would not be able to tell them at all that that I was fooled by uh, that that feeling of fluency it felt really good but I actually didn't understand the material as well as I thought that's really important to have these checks to have and that's exactly what um, this sort of retrieval does when you're actually forced to generate entropy. So if you pause the film and said, what is entropy? And forced you to say, well, it's, uh, yeah, I really have no idea exactly what it is, but it went down easily, then, then I think we're getting closer. But there are a bunch of strategies that we can use, a bunch of these sort of desirable difficulties. Yes, they are hard, but uh, one is retrieval, retrieval practice. Another is spacing putting it time and time again. Another one that we didn't talk about is this idea of interleaving. And so what you can do if you're studying, uh, study statistics for a bit, followed by biology, do a bit of English, and uh, present these things 
in kind of an interleaved format. So you're not just studying uh, statistics in a five hour block. You're kind of spreading it across. So you're kind of getting spacing in there as well, but it's this idea of interleaving, um, of doing one thing for a while and switching to another task. That is also a desirable difficulty. Um, there are a few others that you can do to, to, to make it just a little restructuring your notes in a particular way, organizing it by theme instead of by uh, topic, which, and textbook. Um, Producers do this all of the time, right? They present it in exactly the, the most logical format. They highlight the important points for you. They're doing exactly what I did in my stats course. They're di pre digesting all of this uh, information for the students so they don't have to, so they can just let it wash over them. And they mistake that fluency with understanding. And that's a real problem. So, students in this course should probably be careful as well because, I mean, it we're not professionals, but we've tried as hard as we can to make these videos look as good as they can. Uh, we've tried really hard to make the online experience as best as it can possibly be. Uh, but be careful not to be fooled by, uh, by, by that, that feeling of fluency. Instead, uh, pause the video, spend some time working, actively working, uh, uh, recalling this information and going through that struggle uh, to make sure that you really understand it and that you're really going to be able to retrieve this stuff accurately for months and years to come. Well, we've done a few things. In Think 101, we're not just uh producing this stuff for people to kind of um, absorb and then and wash and have them wash over it, exactly. Yeah. We're actually practicing what it is that we're preaching here. And so in the next segment, we're going to talk about exactly some of the things that we've done to take advantage of these desirable difficulties, to, to try to help the learners in Think 101 uh, retain the content for a much longer period of time. Yeah.